And isn't this a wonderful, wonderful celebration? Uh, I happen to be coming here from doing the Kojo Namdi show. Uh, and one of the, the favorite questions of Tom Sherwood to me, I think in, to me in particular, is how are you getting along with the council? Uh, and I'm so uh, pleased to be coming here today to be with three of my former, well, four of my former colleagues um, on the council to demonstrate really how our government works. Uh, we work together. Um, and we uh, advance the values of Washingtonians together. Uh, and we are fortunate to live in a city where we really agree on 99.9% .9 of things. Uh, but most especially, uh, we have in the last two and a half years been called upon to lock arms with each other to protect our values. Uh, and it is a DC value um, that we care for our earth, our environment, uh, and that we recognize that we are indeed stewards uh, for the next generation of Washingtonians and Americans and people of the world. And we take that responsibility very seriously. Uh, we're also living in a very, uh, in very fortunate times in our city uh, that have allowed us uh, to think big and to act fast and to innovate in ways that cities and countries around the world haven't been able to. That's also a very significant responsibility uh, that we have. Uh, we also have the responsibility uh, to think about how we can include more Washingtonians in all of the work that we do uh, across the city, across all eight wards, in, in every I income uh, demographic that we have in our city. Uh, and today, we get to celebrate all of those things. So let me congratulate everybody who's been working on this. Let me start with my friend Mary Che. Uh, and I have a feeling, Mary, that this bill involves some rubber bands. Did it not? Mary and I had a little joke. Uh, you know that we sat next to each other on the council and our offices were next to each other. Uh, and I, I could always tell when the bill was coming from our office because you couldn't hold it with one folder or paper clip, but it would require stacks and stacks and rubber bands. Uh, and that just demonstrates sometimes this, that these things are complicated. Um, they can live many months, sometimes many years to get done and have required a lot of work. So let me uh, congratulate Mary, not just for this groundbreaking piece of legislation, but really for her tenure that's been focused on helping make DC more sustainable and healthier. Congratulations, <laughs> Council Member Che. And to Councilmember McDuffie and Jack Evans, who have, um, who share our, our focus as a city collectively uh, at making sure that we're healthy and strong economically, that we're growing, uh, that we're fair, uh, and that people across the city are participating uh, in our progress. So thank you to Councilmember Kenya McDuffie uh, and Jack Evans. So Tommy and his team at DOEE, -E, we should be very proud of the group of people who are working for us, who are smart, who are creative, and who are really challenging the status quo, even our very high standards for how um, we fight climate change um, in this city. I want to thank all the members of our various boards who are helping us fight climate change as well. And I'm going to say really quickly uh, some of the things that this bill uh, will help us accomplish. Uh, it mandates by 2032, 100% of the electricity sold in the district comes from renewable sources. It provides significant financial assistance for programs that support low and moderate income residents, including energy as bill assistance, efficiency, and workforce development. Uh, it allows us to make significant improvements to the energy efficiency of existing buildings in the district. Currently, three quarters of our greenhouse gas, gas emissions here in DC are due to energy consumption by buildings, and that's the case for most cities. That's why it's so important. Um, uh, what the commitment and the demonstrated commitment that we have here at AGU uh, demonstrates and to other building owners in our city. So let us thank Chris McEntee once again. 
So starting in 2021, all DC government buildings over 10,000 square feet and all private buildings over 50,000 square feet will be required to improve the efficiency of their buildings. And by 2031, every building in the district that is over 10,000 square feet will need to perform at or better than their building classes median energy star rating. The law also requires that all public transportation and privately owned fleet vehicles become emissions free by 2045. And finally, and very important to us, the Clean Energy DC Omnibus Act provides funding for the DC Green Bank. Uh, and we're very happy about that. The Green Bank um, is, uh, we, we introduced it as a very signature piece of legislation in, our, in my first term. Uh, and it will be the first of its kind in the country. It will allow us to use public dollars to attract and leverage private investment. And by doing so, we can accelerate the deployment of projects focused on clean energy, uh, energy efficiency, and resilience. Uh, and the one thing that we're all called upon to do, whether we're talking about uh, greening DC, building affordable housing, uh, and spreading economic prosperity to all eight wards, is how we, in, in, leverage more private dollars to the very important public investments that we've made already. Uh, by doing so, we will create more jobs, reduce carbon emissions, lower utility costs, and improve our city's green infrastructure. And that's a huge deal for all of us. Uh, so Tommy got to share a, a experience that we had together in Mexico City. Uh, and I'll, I'll just build on that. You heard it from Mary, uh, that we are leading in the nation and in the world. Uh, and this is a unique time, isn't it? Uh, and we are, are different. And this is where being different is good. Uh, we get to represent uh, our city and our nation. And the world really looks to Washington, D.C. Uh, as that representative. We're different. We're not New York, we're not, we're not any of those places. Uh, we are our nation's capital. And it is our faces that we want the world to know as Washington, D.C., not those faces. And so that's why we will continue. <laughs> to acknowledge uh, that climate change is real, that we believe science, and that we will do all we can um, to make the world and our city a better place. Thank you, everybody. Let's sign our bill.